All right, let's make sense, uh, uh, sense of uh, some of these stories now. We have uh, Olusha Sokwade, is the chairman of Ikeja Society, District of Icon. He joins us now. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you for coming on board. Good to see you again. And you look great, by the way. Good, mo good morning, Frank, and good morning to all our viewers. Great to be here again after some break. <laughs> yes, exactly. So uh, yeah, t let's talk to us. Uh, there's some of the... Uh, interesting stories that we have this morning on the show, particularly we see that the price of uh, the locally produced rice has jumped by more than 200% in about seven years. Uh, in 2015, according to this report, uh, a kilogram, one kilogram of um, rice used to be uh, around 175 or not less than 200 naira, but now is uh, almost around 600 naira. Talk to us despite the effort of the federal government. We have the party rice scheme. We have um, uh, quite a lot of uh, incentives for uh, peasant farmers, local farmers. But it looks like it's not helping. Yes, we do know that uh, the, uh, the Bicibian at that, at that point banned some items, including this particular commodity, just to boost local production. So uh, what exactly is missing here? We should have enough supply uh, to, 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 for consumption here, but it looks like uh, the, op uh, the, the opposite is the, is the answer here. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Frank. And I uh, think your last statement answered a question from a layman's side. Our basic economic shows that when your demand outweighs your supply, there is no magic you can do the cost of that particular product will increase. Uh, before now, uh, before the ban of the imported rice, uh, we've had the mixture of uh, both the imported and local uh, rice in place. But when ban was placed and we had to develop it locally, we discovered that the supply has not match up with uh, the demand. I'm sure you know rice is consumption of uh, uh, practically every family. Mm. I don't think there's a day uh, someone in a family, one or two or three, will not eat rice. And you know you're having a different variety compared to other foods. So the demand for it is high and the, the, and the supply is not meeting up. But what are the challenges that uh, despite the investment of the federal government to this, uh, we seem not to be getting it right? It's about insecurity. Uh, the insecurity that have pervaded the uh, agricultural setting uh, in the last uh, few years has hampered the growth of that sector. And that has necessitated the decline. Hello, Mr. Okwade. I guess there's a, a disconnection of uh, um, internet there, perhaps the poor signal there. Um, arising from that uh, connection, but uh, we'll probably see how we can connect back to uh, Ms. Alusha Sokwade to talk to us on this quite important conversation, uh, looking at the fact that the commodity has... Uh, Frank, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, so, okay, all right. I, I, please go ahead. Okay, so I was saying that uh, one of the areas is uh, tackling uh, insecurity, and look for a way for farmers to get back to uh, the farm. Uh, the supply rates uh, compared to the demand of that particular uh, product is on the high side. I'm sure the uh, increase we have seen in terms of rice cannot be compared with the yam flour and other products. It's because of the consumption, and now there is a ban on importation of the foreign rice, which has put pressure on the local production, which we are not meeting up to. So if you can tackle the area of security, for more people to get involved in the business uh, with, the, the, with the support that we are getting from the government, I can tell you that increase in the supply of that product will automatically falls down the price and everybody can benefit from it. Mm. Okay, so, so the insecurity is a major issue, um, of course, which uh, everyone has always talked about and how the government has always talked about the fact that um, effort is ongoing and will continue to try in their own capacity to nip insecurity in the board. Uh, now that we're unable to feed ourselves uh, because of the the spate of insecurity ac across the nation. 
Is it time to review the ban on some of these items, particularly rice? Can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Olufiasson, can you hear me? Well, I was actually asking um, if, of course, if it is time for us to start reviewing uh, the ban on some of these items, particularly uh, the, the rice, you know, for consumption, because it's a majorly staple food that people consume in this part of the world. So if you have insecurity and the farmers are not able to go to work anymore to, to till the ground, to farm, to produce this, uh, to meet up the daily demand, I mean, can we begin to talk about perhaps it's time for CBN to look at how to review uh, it, its ban on some of these items, particularly a rice commodity? Uh, Frank, I will not support uh, that because uh, if you look at uh, Nigeria as a nation, uh, we have every, the, the ground is very fertile for the production of some of these things. Look at the handshake that Lagos State and Kebi had during the lake rise. Mm -hmm. It actually relieved certain things for the Lagosians and they were able to get it. What I think we need to put the government uh, on the toes to do is to see how they need to tame this issue of insecurity in such a way that farmer, you see the younger people that are out there and they are already willing to make use of this form being provided by the CBN to go to agriculture. But when you think of uh, you losing your life to attack uh, by the so-called headsmen, until we structure those things in such a way that you can have where the headsmen will feed their, their, their own wing of agriculture, not impacting on the cash crops, uh, which uh, the human being also rely on, uh, we, we, we may not be going anywhere fast. So those structures will definitely be put in place. Some of the people i can tell you that uh, are actually in prison uh, you know consuming some of the you can put them to use if you have uh, the, the 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 agricultural sector working fine they generate revenue for the government not just staying idle in the prison and with that they can even end something for themselves in such a way that when they are out some of the savings that they are able to get from uh, some of the things that the government is able to produce a certain percentage are accrue with the accruable to them they will be able to use that when they come out to start up something and government will not be thinking of uh, setting up or they are coming out to become a uh, a nuisance to the environment. So I feel that the government needs to work more on the structure in such a way that they think insecurity. And once the security is there, it's automatically individual who want to go into that venture and see how they can maximize it. Uh, I can tell you there are a lot of uh, mechanized uh, farming that is going on now uh, based on the initiative of uh, individuals and uh, some of these uh, 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 what, what we can call safety that is being guaranteed in certain area. So if more of that can be done, you see individual learning people, you know, bringing mechanization and assisting in the value chain in such a way that even when you produce it, you have the guarantee of selling at the market. Mm. Again, um, let, let's talk more about the insecurity because uh, um, the issue of insecurity really, yes, it's, a, it's not only about uh, uh, farms, Farmers now, but across the board, there are other um, you know sectors that have also been affected uh, as well. Um, so let's talk about how the government will be, how the government should begin to address the issue of insecurity uh, henceforth, such that we can attract foreign invest investors um, in in the country. Because um, there was a report as at some time last year where uh, you know in somewhere in the north an investment in, uh, that was made in billions of dollars uh, in the farm, I mean, went down the drain because of insecurity. I mean, I mean most of their staff were kidnapped as well. So um, do you think the government is helpless at this time? Because if at this time, after seven years, going to eight years, we are unable to address this insecurity, can we, you know, uh, say, is it proper to say that the government perhaps is helpless? Yeah, uh, Frank, I won't say the government is stepless, but I just feel that uh, the political will to follow through. One of the uh, areas we have uh, 
advised and at the time we saw the government coming to it it's talking about uh, state policing and the uh, community policing see some of the perpetrators of some of these evil are local in individual areas and what we have observed is that when oh dear i wanted you to uh, perhaps just land on that for so we can proceed to the next story um, I mean, if you're still there and you can hear me, perhaps we'll wrap up on that, on that thought. And yeah, what I'm saying is that polit community policing will solve the problem. If you are able to empower the states in such a way that uh, they are able to manage it. So when I invest in your state, I'm not waiting for the federal government to do anything, but you be able to provide the security as the CSO of that state i'm sure we'll have more relief rather than government you know the other time i heard the governor calling and uh, asking the federal government to come to their aid then why are you there then we the federal government can definitely uh, be ruling your states even from the uh, from abuja so if we can have state policing we discover that it will change the game the fear of them saying that the uh, governors will hijack it for their personal interest it can definitely be managed even by the citizen if they are abusing that privilege but I think state policing and community policing, we assist like we have in the developed client. Mm, mm. Interesting. Point taken. Point, point taken. Let's move on to the next story uh, now, uh, which talk about the oil and gas industry local content uh, growing by about 54% in 2022. And that's according to uh, the federal government on Wednesday, which said that uh, uh, the indigenous participation or investment uh, and participation in the oil and gas industry has uh, increased by 54% in 2022. Um, and that's in, in, uh, in, in, in line with the Local Content Act to promote local content. And he said about 70%, uh, right, that he said that his commitment to raise the number to 70% uh, by 2027. So first, um, how will you rate you know, the participation and the promotion of local content, I mean, by encouraging uh, local investment, that's one. Two, how feasible, uh, because the PIA is still there, um, still hanging in the balance. The subsidy issue is still there. We do not know whether the incoming administration will remove it totally, even though the current administration has borrowed, secured about 800 million U.S. dollars in preparation for what, uh, for the implementation in June. So, but how feasible do you think, uh, you know, the government will raise the number of indigenous participation uh, in the oil and gas industry by 2027? Because the, pro the promise or the, the, the promise is that, or the statement is that uh, the government will raise that number to 70%. We are currently at just more than 50% at the moment. That's about 54%. So, okay. Mike, uh, you see, no, no country grows if there is no indigenous uh, participation of the citizen because you understand your land more than a foreigner. In as much as we believe we are in a global world for uh, foreign direct investment in the nation, the local government content plays a major role uh, in making sure that uh, most of the money uh, that uh, you are getting from our resources are not repatriated back to other countries. And I think it's a good thing that we are hearing this from the local content uh, uh, ministry that we are growing in that sector. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, 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 we want to believe that uh, if we continue, as we have in the oil and gas sector, we should have the same applicable in other sector, power sector, health sector, where the local content, even if you are coming in at the foreign uh, uh, direct investment, you will rely on the expertise of the local people to give the best for you. And with that, you have some of our funds, you know, being domiciled in the national people, repatriating our funds back to their country, for their development. So it's a welcome development. Uh, if they have the target to increase it uh, to 70%, uh, like they said, from 54 in the year 2027, I think it will be a good thing. Then it will be more opening for we, the local uh, 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 indigenous, to benefit from the investment of uh, the foreigners as we grow. Mm. Okay. 
Um, I mean, let's talk about um, some of the challenges um, in the in the sector because at the moment the PIA is still hanging in the board, even though um, the uh, local content monitoring board and monitoring board has said that uh, perhaps the growth they are saying the growth witnessed uh, in that sector is as a result of the PIA in place. However, we do understand that the PIA is still yet implemented because remember it was suspended uh, because of the issue of subsidiary removal and, and the debate that was on at the time. So let, let's talk about the... Yeah, uh, uh, Frank, the, the PIA the, of the thing at yeah. least is a plus on the path of uh, the development in that sector. Uh, we cannot have it won at a go. Uh, but gradually, if we give room for some of the things that are there for implementation, you know, that has been in Angam for over 20 years. Oh, yeah. And uh, it has given a face leap, just like we have in the Finance Act, we have uh, the, the Karma Beyond Review. These are laws, legislation that supports uh, some of the activities uh, in that sector. I want to say that we, can, we, we are not where we used to be. Before the signing of the PIE, uh, there has been an improvement, I must say, because I have uh, friends who play in that sector. Uh, but we can always expect more as we improve on the legislation. You see, the legislation is key. Because if you miss it in the area of legislation, in laws that will guide the development of that sector, you may not get it right. But I can tell you that uh, we may not be where we are supposed to be, but we are not where we used to be in those days in that sector. And I want to believe that uh, the players in that area are looking at some of the lacuna and the, uh, the gaps to fill in such a way to give improvement to the development of the oil and gas. Mm. Let's move to the next story now. Um... I need you to react to this. Uh, the National Population Commission said that the mentally deranged and homeless people and every living being in Nigeria will be counted the, in the upcoming uh, uh, housing and population uh, counting or census, if you put it that way. Uh, so let's look at, at this. Um, how would this be captured? Because they talked about how, Im and, and how important is this? Um, is it necessary to count the mentally deranged because they are saying that every living thing every man will be everyone will be captured you know uh both who are in their right senses uh, i mean those who are healthy and those who are mentally affected they will still be captured and we also need to look at the cost because perhaps uh, this will come with a cost as well and then um, capturing everyone uh on the third one uh capturing everyone how would this affect or um, the uh, in terms of productivity, how would this impact on our productivity? Oh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, in line, uh, in the, when we talk about the population, uh, the sensor, I think it's uh, uh, a, a company that do not have good database of either his customer or his, even his staff has started failing. Why we are not getting it right currently is because we don't have a database to analyze, you know, uh, demographically some of the things that we need to do. Uh, as we we'll speak, what is the, well, we, we only have, excuse me, possible speculation of the number of youth we have. What are their age bracket? You see, with sensor, you'll be able to have understanding of your populace. And when you are talking about mentally challenged, all these people in question are actually utilizing uh, the the uh, uh, infrastructure being provided for by the people, and that will even give you instances of areas where you need to. If you have more of your of your citizen, you know, mentally detached, it tells you that depression is what to, is what leads to some of these things, and you need to improve out on it. So I feel it's uh, something in the right direction for them to count everyone. Let's even know the actual number of the people. Let's know those that are with sanity, those that are not with that sanity. Let's see area where we can work on and improve in such a way that we can have the actual number. And when you talk about the cost, uh, the uh, MPC has actually suggested to us that they are making use of technology. And I'm sure with technology, we can improve on it. When they come to your place... Mm. Hello, Mr. Okwandi. Are you still there? Well, I, I wanted um, Mr. Okwandi to finish that thought. Uh, 
how that is going to be done. Again, we also need to begin to... Can you hear me, Frank? Yeah, please. Okay, go ahead. You're back now. Please. Yeah, what I'm saying is that we are using technology. And uh, with technology, we should have lesser cost in implementing this. At least you do away with the paper uh, stuff in when, when, when you are making those uh, reports. Mm -hmm. And what that we aid is that you are supporting the sustainability report that we've said of greener energy. So uh, I think capturing everyone is what we need to know the actual number. What the government can use that for is to plan for every individual on things that we need to do. If you have more people that are mentally derailed on the road, can we provide facility to accommodate them? Some of them might be depression and with little you know webs you can encourage them and they go back into the uh, environment which will make them more productive somebody who is insane and is not receiving the necessary attention cannot be productive but as soon as you're able to make that and bring that into the net and she has that sanity she can contribute to the bottom line of the nation uh, growth and development and i think that is why i'm in support that everyone needs to be counted so that we can have understanding of it and technology should be used not the era of uh, paper documentation that will not get value or people will say they are attacked or they mistake. But with technology, uh, we can ride on it and have the best that is expected of us for effective planning. Okay. Uh, well said. So let's move to the next one now. The number of electricity consumers um, according to uh, you know, distribution, uh, distribution companies, they say the number of electricity consumers without meters you know, has risen to around 190,000. So we we'll look at implication of this. And if you look at the number of uh, metered customers, you know, uh, which in recent time, according to that report, that has risen by about 30 point, you know, more than 3% uh, in 2020. So talk to us about the implication of this, particularly with the fact that the revenue uh, generation by the discos have dropped drastically by about 25 percent you know to 563.75 billion in 2022 from 761.16 uh, billion at the previous year yeah uh the the power sector like i keep saying plays a strategic role in our economic development and uh, I think uh, NEC is trying to review certain things. Uh, some of us who play in that uh, sector have said uh, NEC seems to be the edict that we have today. They come out with uh, a mass metering. Tomorrow they ask customer to go and pay. And you'll be asking yourself, if my neighbor is taking free meter and I'm paying, what's the justification? Are you refunding back my money even with the other economy? So we feel that the regulators should streamline the activity. Uh, I don't know why you want to give free meter to every individual. The area where we feel they need to do is to create that enabling environment. Let everyone purchase what they want in terms of meters. Liberalize the sector in such a way that you can bring in investor to bring in some of this meter in line with uh, the specification by the disco so that you can have more circulation of that meter. We are not saying that you should liberalize for people to go and be selling meter to third party, but liberalize it in such a way that they can open up when you give the specification, they, they can go ahead, buy the meter and you contact whosoever, whichever disco that you are going to plug in and definitely saying that the meter that you bought is in line, they will definitely come, install the meter and you can have the accurate billing uh, on their part. You see, 190,000 is the result of development we keep having here and there every day i'm sure you know people are building houses uh, people are constructing uh, constructing a building for their businesses and they need to be metered uh, but from you what you said uh, there seems to be an improvement in the meter installation but not to the uh, uh, to the expectation to close the gap that we are currently faced with so we want a situation where that area will be liberalized in such a way that each disco in their locality can give uh, uh, opportunity for people to okay so so to, i wanted to jump in there to ask um i mean if meter should be issued you know uh free who should take the cost of producing this free meter uh that's one question and then uh, is that they invade and avoid connectivity to your uh, to your electricity and it will not give you the service okay. that is expected of you at any point in time i, I want to jump in uh, uh mr kwande to ask um 
if these meters initially, our initial were supposed to be given out freely, I mean, who is taking the course? That's one question. And if nobody is taking the course, can we begin to say, okay, uh, the discourse perhaps, because they talked about, you know, perhaps taking up that uh, uh, responsibility or making, uh, making it a business apart from what they are doing currently. So uh, what's your opinion about this? What's your position? Yeah, well, for the first one, that will be the cause. The federal government bear the cause because there is no free lunch in free time. So whatever you have, you definitely know that someone is paying for it. Mm -hmm. So the federal government bear the cost as part of uh, what they will consider as poverty alleviation uh, project for the citizen. But we feel that uh, there are other areas where this thing can be ventured into. You can create like an insurance policy. You can, you know, talk to microfinance bank in such a way that they can allow people who are vulnerable to make this payment, you know, instrumentally as the make use of it. And I can can tell you for free that electricity is strategic to the growth of every uh, uh, country. If you have light, some of the artisans that are out there that are not utilizing the skills that they possess rather than doing other things are not contributing to the bottom line of the environment. I, I, if, if you are there to look for a welder, I'm sure everybody has gone to school. Nobody wants to study that. Plumber, all these artisans, Baba, they all need electricity and if they're able to provide it and they have accurate billing and the only way they can get a great billing is by metering them and they are willing to pay make available the meter i know there are a uh, map going on in some disco as we speak but uh, how much of it are we putting in place in such a way that people can have uh, access to that meter as soon as possible and that's why we are crying and asking for liberalization of it that individual can venture into that provision uh, with the disco making specification of what they want and when they pay they have access to it within one month and that would definitely build the trust and confidence for them to have access because estimated billing will definitely impact on the bottom line of every organization mm -hmm. because when mm -hmm. you are supposed to pay 10, 10, 10 naira mm -hmm. and you are being estimated on 15 20 naira mm -hmm. that on its own is impacting on the bottom line of the organization which may impend or uh, impaired on their growth Mm. But uh, but uh, in a nutshell, that means that we, we cannot completely rule out uh, you know, estimated billing in the meantime. Yeah, well, in, in, in the short time, we may not be able to do that. But I think on the long run, if the, uh, the right strategy are put in place for people to have access to that, it will become a thing of the past. Some disco are already having it now. That if you must have new connection before they can energize or connect you to the grid, they must provide meter. And that's another strategy to close the gap of which we feel that if that is continued, we can definitely have uh, 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 the, 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 the correct apparatus of metering and uh, billing people accordingly. Okay. A good place to leave you. Thank you, Olusha Son Okwande, is chairman. Uh, Ikeja, this is Society of Akan, is also a policy analyst. We appreciate you for coming on board. Thank you very much, Frank, for having me this morning. To Pleasure to always be with you. To have a great day. You've been watching Business Breakfast. We're broadcasting live from our studios here in Lagos. Well, still to come after the break, we'll head to straight to the equities market as we take a look at uh, the activities there. Nigerian stock market closes positive with market capitalization going up or gaining 18 billion naira at the close of Wednesday's session. That's our next talking point. We'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs>